Hello racers, and welcome to your first AWS Deep Racer model building guide. Before we begin, please make sure you have an AWS account and an associated email ID. If you do not have that, we would recommend you to create one using the link below. Let's begin. This is the login page for AWS. Here we select the root user option and enter your AWS associated email address. Click next and then enter your password. Now that we have logged into the AWS Management Console, our first step is to make sure we have the right server set up for the AWS DeepRacer. This can be done by taking our mouse pointer to the top right corner and selecting N Virginia or the US East, US East One server. After picking the correct server, we have to find the DeepRacer service on AWS. We will type DeepRacer into the Find Services box. We will then select that and proceed. All right, so now we are at the DeepRacer service landing page wherein we can find everything related to DeepRacer. We recommend you to watch the videos as well as read the documentation present on the page as it will help you to understand a lot more about the AWS DeepRacer product, its events, and the technology behind it. However, however, Let's now start with our model building process. On the left side of the web page, you'll see a topic called reinforcement learning, and below that, you'll see the option of get started. Click on this. We will be directed to the model building web page of the AWS DeepRacer, which will show us an overview of the AWS DeepRacer. This talks about the journey you will take with the AWS DeepRacer project beginning by learning about reinforcement learning and resulting in you competing in the deep racer leagues. Moving on, we go on to step zero and select on allocating account resources. We need to make sure we have a valid IAM role as well as an AWS deep racer resource stack associated with our account. We will wait until we see a green tick against both these options. Let us click on this and wait until we see green ticks on both of them. This might take a while, anywhere from five to as much as 10 minutes, and we would recommend that you pause right now until the process is complete. Next, we will skip part one and go towards part two. Part two is the create a model and race step. Select create model. This page lets us into the nitty gritty of our backend reinforcement model. We will scroll down and confirm that you have account resource allocated. And if you don't see the two green check marks, please wait until this is done. Next, we give the model a name. We would recommend in the future that you select an appropriate name according to the approach that you would like to build your reward function. But for now, we will proceed with test model one. We would also recommend writing a complete description of the approach you take in creating the reward function in the model description space. For now, we will just type, this is our first AWS DeepRacer model. Next, what we have is the environment simulation piece. The environment contains a track that defines where the agent, here our DeepRacer, can go and what state it can be in. The Deep Racer explores the environment to collect data to train the underlying neural network. To begin with, we will take a simple model such as the reInvent 2018 track. One quick tip here, the more complicated your track is, the faster your model learns. Why do you think so? You can let us know in the comments below. So now we will proceed and select the reInvent 2018 track and scroll down. Next, we will select next and move on to the next page. Now, we are looking at the page which displays the race type. This is where we can select either a time trial, object avoidance, or head-to-head -head racing. As we move on from time trial to head-to-head -head racing, the complexity of the problem increases as well as the resources are required. Why do you think that is? Again, let us know in the comments section. Next, we will have to select our agent, which is our vehicle. For now, we will select the basic version called the original Deep Racer. Remember, this vehicle is also configurable separately, but for now, we will select the default and proceed. Now, we reach the most important part of this guide and the place which can help you achieve the fastest lap. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the reward function. 
The reward function describes immediate feedback as a score for reward or penalty when the vehicle takes an action to move from a given position on the track to a new position. Its purpose is to encourage the vehicle to make moves along the track to reach its destination quickly. The model training process will attempt to find a policy which maximizes the average total reward the vehicle experiences. This code is completely editable. We would recommend you to play around with this code a lot while you train multiple versions of your Deep Racer model. There are certain preset models which are provided by AWS, but feel free to experiment as well. You can check out these presets if you select the reward function examples. In case you do edit the reward function, you can check whether the code syntax is correct or not by clicking on validate. For now, we will select the default function and scroll down. We can now see the training algorithm and hyperparameters. Hyperparameters are variables to control your reinforcement learning training. They can be tuned to optimize the training time and model performance. For our first model, we will let the parameters remain in their default state and proceed. Scrolling down, we see the stop conditions. The training of your model will stop when the specified criteria is met. When your model has stopped training, you will be able to clone your model and start training again using new parameters. We set it to be five minutes for this tutorial, but would recommend at least 30 minutes for each model you make in the future. Then click on next. Now we are training our model. On the top side of the screen, we can see the training is being initialized. So right now, AWS is allocating resources for the model and we'll start training our model. This is a time consuming process, hence we would recommend you to pause the video and wait until you start seeing a simulation video on the screen. Now we can see how our model is training. We can see the reward graph as well as the simulation video stream. Both of these changes over time as our model runs. We would recommend you spend the time to take note of the graph and its labels as this gives you a good idea of how fast your model is learning and can save you a lot of future training hours. This simulation will run until the set stops time. After a brief while, the reward graph will start populating and we can see after multiple iterations, our model earns more and more reward and also increases its average percentage completion of the training track each time. This goes to show that our model is taking feedback from the environment and learning what actions to take at a particular state. The longer we let our model train, the better our model will be. After this, our training is complete and we can evaluate our model. So next we select start evaluation. To evaluate our model, we need to set evaluation criteria. First, we are asked to select the track where we want to evaluate our model. We can choose to select the same track we let our model run or choose a new track to see how robust or flexible our model is to change. Right now, we will select the same track, which is the reInvent 2018 to evaluate our model. We also will scroll down and select the same race type, which is the time trial. We skip the virtual race submission for now as we are just running our first model. Later, once we have better models, we can choose to submit them right away to virtual races. Next, we click on Start Evaluation. This will start our model evaluation as well as start a model stream, which will show us how exactly our model is working on a test environment. Note that this is a model testing, hence the model is not learning anything here. It is just applying what it has learned on the training exercises. The evaluation results will start populating as well as show how many trials, as well as how much time and percentage of the track completed per trial that our model was able to perform. Also now it would be a good idea to note down the driving pattern of the model as we can identify certain driving characteristics which we will want to improve on over the next iterations. An example could be if there's a very zigzag pattern in the steering of the model, we could counter it by introducing a change in the reward function which penalizes rapid switch in steering patterns. While the model begins its evaluation, we are able to see the video stream which shows exactly how our model is running on the test environment. This shows us how our model is implementing what it has learned over the training period. On the right side of the screen, we can now see the various evaluation metrics and our model performance. Even though we have very poor results, that is because of the extremely short training time we allowed our model to learn. 
If you allow the model to train for more than an hour, you will see much better results. So now we have completed this guide for creating your very first AWS DeepRacer model. Here's a recap of some of the things that we have learned. First, we now know how to access and navigate within the AWS DeepRacer console. Second, we identified the steps that go into building a model in the AWS DeepRacer console. Third, we now know how to use the basic reward function within the DeepRacer to configure a model. And finally, we use the DeepRacer simulator to train and evaluate our model. As this was your first attempt, you can only get better and faster with more practice and more advanced reward functions. Good luck and keep racing with Colaberry and AWS.